Hi, my name is Lewis Nicholas, and my favorite candy is Snickers. We are brewing up some Halloween fun for our annual Boo Bash. Join us on October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. dressed in your favorite Halloween costume and enjoy trick-or-treating here at Epiphany Lutheran Church. But we need more candy. Please consider making a monetary donation or bringing large bags of candy to the church at any time this weekend. We appreciate your help in making Boo Bash a success this year. We want to thank everyone who contributed to wrapping and packing over 404 personal care kits last Sunday. In just a few short weeks, on November the 5th, our kits will be united with kits created from other churches in Southeast Texas as we load them into a semi-trailer to their final destination. We are looking for strong-armed and strong-minded volunteers to assist loading the truck. The fun begins November the 5th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and we will provide lunch for you. If you are able and willing, please get in touch with Sandy and Bob Miller by emailing them at the address below. Oh, this is pretty good. May God bless you and thank you for being here. And we pray that this day blesses you and enhances you and assures you of what Jesus has done for you. We begin.
the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace unto all of you. And by his command and in his stead, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Almighty and gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we commemorate the Great Reformation and lay claim to this legacy of pure doctrine and the zeal for the proclamation of this gospel that grew out of this movement. We give thanks to God for his gospel, for the doctrine that flows from the gospel, and for Martin Luther, who recalled the church to its truth with such clarity and conviction. In the first reading from Revelation, we hear the message the church is given to proclaim until Christ comes again. In Romans, Paul gives clear explanation of what it means to be saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of John, we are taught that we are his disciples and free because we abide in his life-giving word. With that, please be seated for the readings from God's word. The first reading comes from the 14th chapter of Revelation, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the spring of water. This is the word of the Lord. For today's psalm, I would just like all of us to read it together. So let's do that. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The epistle reading comes from the third chapter of Romans, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to us who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It, It was to show his righteousness at the present time 
so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. I would ask that the adults be seated. If there's children here today, you're invited for a children's message. And if there's... Okay. Saved. Good morning. Good morning. Here comes another one. Oh, you look so good. Good, You're welcome. Well, guess what? I am so excited to be here today. Are you? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're going to be really excited because I have a special gift in my hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is really, really special. And I was thinking I might want to give this gift away. It is so special because it's a reminder of the greatest blessing that anybody could ever, ever get. Who wants my gift? Me. Yeah? Yeah? All right. Well, if you want my gift. (laughs) You don't want the gift. A nice gift, good gift. You like bad gifts. Can can you be on my Christmas list? You're going to get a book for Christmas. (laughs) I can give give bad gifts. (laughs) Okay, you want it. Okay, well, in order to receive my gift, I want you to reach your hand out for it. I want my gift, Pastor. Now, why did you reach your hand out so quickly? Just because I was telling you about my gift. Why did you do that? Because I want it. Because you want it? That must mean that you believe what I was saying is true, huh? Now... Why did you believe me? You don't know? Do you think it's Do you think it's maybe because you know me? And you know that like I only want good things for you and that I would never do anything to like trick you or hurt you, right? You trust me, right? Okay. Sure. I think I should give everybody the gift. She doesn't know me that well yet. I bet once she knows me more, she's going to be like, yeah, I want it too, huh? All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you one too. I'll give you one too. <clears throat> Isn't that pretty? Do you want to hold it up? Do you want to tell them what it is? All right. And across. Now, let's talk about what just happened. I offered you something, 
and you took it, right? Now, did you deserve what I just gave you? Yeah. You did? <laughs> Are you sure? No. Did you do something to earn it? No. No? You didn't do anything to earn it, huh? And, in fact, you might have done something earlier or earlier in the week that maybe makes you not deserve it at all, but I still gave it to you, right? That's called grace. Remember, we talk about that a lot around here, don't we? We talk about how we always do things that we probably should not do, that we know we shouldn't do, huh? We, we all make that? mistakes called sin. But when somebody does something really good for us in spite of the fact that we've done bad things, that's called grace, right? God gives us a lot of grace, doesn't he? Every single day he shows us grace. Now, here's the other thing that I want to talk about. When I gave you the offer of this gift, you immediately did exactly what I say. You put your hand out to ask for it, right? And that's because you truly believed that what I had was good. You know what that's called? <laughs> that's called faith. You had faith because you know me and you trust me and you care about me, I hope, because I care about you. So you had faith that what I said was true. Yeah, of a tank and an army. And now, you know, in the Bible, you know what it says? That we need to have faith in Jesus, that Jesus is the one who saves us from our sin, who saves us from our mistakes. Now, God gave Jesus to us as a gift, didn't he? And he gave us the faith so that we could know him. Okay, last thing I want to talk about. <clears throat> Would you have known that I had that gift mm -hmm. if I hadn't said anything to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, huh? My words revealed the gift to you, didn't they? If I had just held it in my hand the whole time and talked to you about God, you wouldn't have realized that I even had that gift, huh? So my words revealed that message to you. Now, God talks to us with his words. Where do we find his words? Um, in, the in my hand. <laughs> Not in my hand, in the Bible, right? <laughs> yes, God's word is in the Bible. And they call that scripture. You'll hear that a lot in this church. We talk about scripture, and that means the Bible, the Word of That's God. The now, <clears throat> the whole Bible talks about one person, and that's Jesus. When we read the Old Testament, we hear stories about the promise of Jesus coming. We hear lots of stories about people waiting for Jesus and the promise of Jesus coming. And then when we read the New Testament, we learn all about Jesus. We learn about his life, how God sent him to the earth. We learn about his death, how he died on the cross to pay for our sins. And then we hear the most beautiful message, how on the third day he rose again. He was resurrected, and he's now in heaven. Why is that important that we know that? I think it's really important. I think we need to know that. It's very important because we need to remember there's nothing we can do to take our sin away from us, is there? Only Jesus can do that. So let's talk about these three things again. We talked about, what was the first thing we talked about? We talked about grace, right? The gift that God gives us where he forgives us and loves us in spite of the things that we do, right? We talked about faith, right? That, that we believe that Jesus is our Savior. And faith is a gift from God. And then the last thing we talked about was Scripture, His Word, where we can find God always by opening that Bible, God's true Word. Pastor, you got anything to add to that? It's just notice that we have red today, and that's the color of blood. 
and that there were many people who died to make sure that you heard the message you just heard. That Jesus loves you and that will never be taken away from you. So we celebrate today a wonderful day of, of, of just giving thanks to God. So let's pray. Repeat after me, okay? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For loving us. For loving us. For saving us. For saving us. Through grace. Through grace. Through faith. Through faith. Found in your word. Found in your word. Help us. Help us. To always know. To always know. And to always go. And to always go. To your word. To your word. Where you are found. Where you are found. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Enjoy your crosses. And enjoy the little poem that I think you got on there. It's pretty cool.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A blessed observance of the Reformation to you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. The text for today's sermon is our epistle reading, Romans 3, 19 to 28, and the title is Justified by Grace Through Faith in Christ Jesus. Please follow along as I read Romans 3 again. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ who for, for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he has passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gracious good news of the gospel, which you uncovered through your servant, Martin Luther. It is not by our doing, but by what you have done to buy us back by your redeeming blood shed on the cross for our salvation. This is your gift of grace given to all who believe and trust in you for faith in your beautiful sacrifice. By ourselves, we fall short of the glory of God. By ourselves, we have missed the mark in sinning against you in thought, word, and deed. We need you, Jesus, every hour and every minute of every day. You make all the difference. In you is life and light and salvation through the forgiveness of all of our sins. In you there is no place for pride, only praise to God our Heavenly Father, forgiving you as our Savior for the world. Bless us to share the good news of your saving love with others through the power of your Holy Spirit to the Father's glory in your redeeming name, Jesus. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. It was 505 years ago tomorrow, October 31st, 1517, that Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the Castle Church door in Wittenberg, Germany. That the Lord used to start the process of the Reformation to uncover the gospel that has been hidden for many years. Luther had no idea what the Lord intended to do through him as he posted those 95 theses. They were written in Latin as a scholarly invitation to debate the issue of indulgences that were being sold to ordinary people with the assurance that the owner of the piece of paper or his loved ones would be released from the torments of purgatory. They had a saying that went like this, once the coin into the coffer clings, a soul from purgatory heavenward springs. The 95 theses were translated by Luther's students into German and then printed and given out to all who would read them and from them to all the countries of Europe. And yet, the Reformation began years earlier in a huge rainstorm that changed the course of young Martin Luther's life in 1505 when Luther pled for God's help in the storm and vowed to become a monk. Luther poured himself into being a monk with fasting and prayer, going without sleep, enduring bone-chilling cold without a blanket, and beating himself to subdue his flesh. He would spend hours confessing his sins, only to remember more sins when he departed from the confessional. Luther hated the word righteousness, 
because he understood this to mean that he must do something to get right with God. The more he tried, the more he failed. During the time of frustration and terror before God, Luther was ordered to take the doctorate in the study of the Bible and become a professor at the University of Wittenberg. It was 15, 13, and 14 when Luther was delivering lectures on the Psalms and during a study of the book of Romans. The Lord broke through, Luther wrote. At last, meditating day and night by the mercy of God, I began to understand that the righteousness of God is that which the righteous live by a gift of God, namely faith. Here I felt as if I were entirely born again and had entered paradise itself through the gates which had been flung wide open. By the time of 1517, Luther had come to understand the precious gift of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and how the selling of indulgences for the forgiveness of sins was so totally wrong and corrupt that he had to begin the discussion that led to the Reformation that is ongoing today. There are three great truths of the Reformation that are called the three solas. Sola means alone. Sola gratia, sola fides, sola scriptura. This is Latin for by grace alone, by faith alone, and by scripture alone. All three of these truths are contained in our epistle reading. Paul writes, For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. By grace alone, we are human sinners, incapable of doing right before God to save ourselves. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is what Luther experienced during his season of frustration and terror. This is what you and I experience whenever we look to ourselves alone, apart from the grace of God. The problem is not just that we, what we do or say, but who we are. We are human sinners who sin daily and much. We would have deserved nothing but death and hell if God had not intervened by sending his son to save us. We are justified by the gift of grace, his gift of redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What a marvelous gift it is. Redemption. Christ Jesus bought us back from sin and death and hell. We are justified by Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. What Jesus accomplished by his suffering and death on the cross is an atoning sacrifice for all our sins and the sins of the whole world. This is grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. The shed blood of Christ Jesus makes all the difference. Jesus became our substitute and died the death we deserve, that by his death and resurrection we might live a life and experience salvation we have forgiveness by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are alive through the Lamb who was slain and now lives. We are justified, declared righteous before God through Jesus Christ. Justified, just as if I had never sinned. This is grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Sola gratia, by grace alone. Sola fides, by faith alone. Our text says of the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, that it is to be received by faith. And the passage concludes, For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is where Luther wrote a big sola, S-O-L-A, in his Bible, emphasizing that it is by faith alone that we are justified, not a combination of faith in our works. It is by faith alone, sola fide. And this faith because it is faith in Christ Jesus. Justification is by faith in the object of our faith, Christ Jesus himself. Jesus did it all. We can't add anything to what Christ has done by our works. Jesus cried on the cross, it is finished, because he accomplished all the work. Trust in Christ 
for your salvation. If it were to depend on our works, you could never be sure. Because your faith rests on Jesus, you can be absolutely sure. Let me say that again. Because it rests on what Jesus has done, you can be absolutely sure that nothing can separate you from God's love. By faith alone, faith in Christ Jesus is God's gift for us to receive and hold fast for life and salvation flowing from his grace. Sola gratia, by grace alone, sola fide, by faith alone, sola scriptura, by scripture alone. Sola scriptura, by scripture alone. Paul writes, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. The phrase, the law and the prophets, is another way of describing the scriptures, the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures is the inspired and infallible word of God where Christ Jesus is revealed to us. This is where we find the truth about how we are put right with God through him. The scriptures are our source and norm for all our teaching, preaching, and confession of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. As Luther would say when he appeared before the emperor, my conscience is held captive to the word of God. Here I stand. I can do no other. Sola gratia, by grace alone. Sola fide, by faith alone. Sola scriptura, by scripture alone. These three solas all point to one Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what the Reformation is all about. It's about our faith that we are justified by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. We thank and praise you. We thank and praise your holy name to the Father's glory and the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, for all you have done to win salvation for us and for the world. We rejoice in the good news of your victory over sin and death and the devil by your cross and resurrection. Thank you, Lord, that we are justified by your grace through faith in you, our Savior and King. Bless us to trust in you through all the ups and downs of this life. Bless us to cling to you and to your gospel with steadfast faith, hope, and love in you and through you, Lord Jesus. This we pray in your wonderful name, Jesus, and all God's children say, Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep and guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. Now I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
It is prayer time at Epiphany, and uh, behind me, the flowers. This is pretty cool, from Ron and Ricky, Vicky Romero, um, from her mom's 104th birthday. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, uh, whew, that's a long time. Um, and from Rick and Margaret Mallon in celebration of the Reformation and their 56th wedding anniversary, which pales in comparison to 104 years. Okay. <laughs> Uh, prayers uh, for Bernadette Thornton, um, a few prayers. Her great aunt Martha Hamilton passed away and uh, this last week, and the funeral was yesterday. And then her great aunt Blanche fell and broke her femur, and so she was so a lot of a lot of stress in that family. Um, Doris Falkenberg, she had uh, deep brain stimulation surgery, stage one of that. She's home and and recovering. Um, Fred Wamhoff has a few complications with his blood pressure and some of the chemo. Janet Donath, uh, got, uh, she's doing better, and she's, she's uh, been moved to a, a skilled nursing area. Um, Paula McNeese, after her, neuro, her surgery, is, is, uh, got some spinal fluid leakage, but they're monitoring that, hoping it's okay. She's had some pretty major surgery, removing a tumor behind her optic nerve. Um, Pat Fleischman, uh, she's been moved, my understanding is, and sh but she has some complications with her health still. Uh, Jack Hempel, little Jack, he broke his leg, and, and uh, he's going to have his thyroid removed on November 8th. He has some low oxygen levels, just a lot of complications, and he has croup, and um, we pray for the, the Hempel family during this time. Um, Salinta Elliott for Salinta's mother Helen. She's uh, she's going to she's got various health issues and they're trying to figure out which way to best help her through those. For Carol Hager with her foot, uh, another two weeks hopefully and things will find some normalcy. Hazel Hickson, this is Beth's mother-in-law that she's got some cancer treatments that she's got to undergo. Um, Carla Hearson, her mom is in Denver going through some difficulties, and so Carla's kind of torn being here and there and trying to help out. John Brinkmeyer, he, uh, he's, he's doing dialysis for his kidney, but he's going to be tested in November for another kidney, and so keep the family in your prayers. Kendra Melbrath, her dad, Brad, is getting better. Jim Gohlmeyer, um, his sister, she's in a memory care nursing home, and uh, we just keep her in our prayers. And Donna Mischke, She's in a rehab facility at 529 in Queenston, and I think that's where Paula McNeese actually used to work, and, uh, and she's making progress to regain her strength. So with that, uh, and these prayers here, we have one for Rudy Humble. Humble, this is uh, Keegan here, my, conf my confirmand, and he's my accolade, one of my accolades today. This is his grandfather who just collapsed, and they're trying to figure out what's going on there. And... Uh, then another one for Adam Valverde. This is the brother of Steve Valverde. He's been diagnosed with cancer. So for Adam. Well, with that, let us rise and let us join together in prayer. <clears throat> Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth through and in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all those we named earlier and those we name in our hearts at this time. We pray for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you. 
and that no sin may ever frighten nor alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the wicked, or, or wicked, the world and its wicked ways, and to overcome the devil and all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy. When he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread. He broke it, and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the same way also after supper he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant poured out for the forgiveness of all of your sin. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. At this, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer at this time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
will change. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in grace, in faith, unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you hope, peace. Peace. 